everybody, it's Michelle, and today I've got for you a Pilates reformer workout. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do a lot of standing work up on the reformer, so make sure that you're comfortable with doing that before starting today's video, okay? So we're going to use uh, the box at one point, so make sure you have yours close by, and we're going to start standing for our warm-up, okay? So have your foot bars all the way down, and have the lightest spring on that you feel comfortable with uh, being standing up on your machine. So light for our inner thighs, that's going to be the emphasis. So I have my medium blue spring on. You're welcome to go even lighter if you want more work for the inner thighs, or go a little heavier uh, to feel more secure with your standing position on the reformer, okay? So let's come on up to standing. So have your reformer in front of you, uh, and then you always want to step up onto the solid platform first, and then take your other foot onto the carriage, not allowing the carriage to move, okay? So get a nice solid placement of the feet, have the carriage attached to the stopper, so there's no pull on the springs yet, okay? Now just stand tall, rooting through your feet, feel that inner thigh connection, and we're just gonna let our chin nod. Now as we roll down through our spine, don't let the carriage move at all. So I'm maintaining that connection through the inner thighs. You can let your hands fall through the springs, get a nice deep stretch, and then reverse that. Feel those inner thighs, your abdominals carving up to stand you up tall. Okay, let's do that again. Again, now if you can't keep the machine from moving, these springs might be a little too light for you. So that would be a sign to make a change. All right, now come up tall, stack your bones one over the other, and we're gonna go into a side leg press. So allow your arms to float to a T, and then squeeze and feel your carriage hug against the stopper. Yeah, so you can go as far as you'd like, as long as we don't get too out of whack with our alignment. So don't let the tail stick out, don't let the pelvis tilt too much. Try to keep your nice vertical spine. Yes, now the work is really on the way back in. So see if you can tap into the end of your machine without making a sound and give it a little bit of a pause and a slight isometric hold before you move on. That's when you're gonna really feel those inner thighs working. All right, now this time press out and stay. Okay, now do not let your carriage move as much as you can. We're gonna hinge forward into a flat back. Now my carriage still hasn't moved. I'm gonna drop the crown of my head to the floor and look upside down. Now as if there was like rose petals on the floor, I'm gonna pick them up with my hands, reach my arms up, and then bring my feet in and drop my arms out to the T. Do that again, so my arms are reaching. I maintain this position of the carriage, tip your sits bones to look at the back wall, drop your head, scoop like you're picking petals up off the floor, stand up, and then just open your arms. Yeah, so getting comfortable being out at this end range, keeping it steady, and then moving through it. Yes, so we're warming up, but it's not easy by any means. Come in and then open the arms. All right, next we're gonna press out and stay. So again, find a spot where you can maintain the carriage still. Now you're gonna cross and touch opposite foot with opposite hand looking upside down at the top hand and then come up. Now do the other side, tip, you feel a nice hamstring stretch, restack, and then close the carriage all the way in. Whew, let's do that again. We'll do that two more times. So press out, and it's okay to have a small uh, distance between your feet. Yeah, if you ever don't feel stable or comfortable, you can do all of these movements with the carriage fully closed. All right, let's do that one last time. Push away, whew, allowing that pelvis to tip, and then restack. One last time, tip, and then up, whew, and then come all the way in. Ah, so good, you guys. All right, step down or step onto your platform if you feel comfortable doing that to turn around. And let's do all of that on the other side. I'm just gonna do the same side so then you can see me a little bit better, okay? But you'll have your new foot on the carriage, your new foot onto the platform. Ah, let's do another set of those roll downs. It's a good way just to kind of reconnect, get settled in on this new side. So now we're a little more comfortable and understanding of how that carriage can move on these lighter springs, yeah? Ooh. 
All right, so now stack up and we'll go in just to our side split out and then return. Yeah, allowing a little stretch through the inner thighs and then squeezing those stretched muscles to come back. Yes, now you don't wanna be sticking your butt out, but you also don't wanna be overly clenching your glutes and tucking under too much. So you wanna feel almost like when we're laying on the ground, neutral, how you have a small, low curve, low curve, <laughs> small curve in your lower back. Oh my goodness, so tongue twisted. Okay, now press away and stay. We're gonna go into a flat back, keep the carriage as still as possible, drop the head, pull the carriage in to stand up, and open your arms. Two more times, I press out, I hinge, I let my head hang if that is comfortable to you. Come up and then open the arms. One last time, yeah, you don't have to be too strict about it. This should feel good. Should allow that freedom of movement through the arms as we stabilize on the bottom. Now press out and hold and we're gonna do our cross and touch on both sides, yes, drop the head, look upside down, and then come in. Good, so now that we're comfortable with this movement pattern, see if you can really kind of breeze through it. Yeah, it gets a little harder to keep that carriage still, the swifter we're moving through the upper body. Do that one last time. And then come all the way in, huh, amazing. Okay, so now carefully climb down one foot at a time from your machine and we're gonna go to a heavier spring. So whatever that means to you, I'm gonna trade my blue for a red spring. So one heavy, so now heavier. So we're working the outsides of the legs, okay? So again, step back on, platform foot first. The closer this carriage foot is to the edge of the carriage, the heavier the springs are gonna feel. So that's a good way to modify without having to change the springs is move that foot, okay? So start squeezing the feet together and just go into a squat. So no movement on the carriage, just drop down and stand up, yes. So now we don't have to work as hard to keep the carriage still because we have a little bit of help from the springs, but still thinking of that connection so it doesn't move. Let's do three more. Long back, get nice and low. Go into your deepest squat. All right, now stand up and go into your straight leg presses. Ooh, so just noticing how this feels different. Now the effort is more on the press out. And then on the way in, we kind of have to be the brakes to slow that movement down. Good, do that a few more times. Find your range, adjust your footing if you need to. So as far as you can go without tipping the pelvis. All right, so now press out and hold. This time as we come in, we're gonna end up in that deepest squat. So my knees are bending as the carriage returns and then reaching back tall on the way out. I come in and down up and out, and you can be reaching the arms with it as well, if you'd like. So everything is happening together. Two breaths, in and out, in and out. Do that two more times. Get to your deepest squat. By the time the carriage arrives, pause with your straight legs, and then pull the carriage all the way in. Oh, awesome, okay, so now, we're gonna allow the knees to go kind of one at a time bending. So start with your legs long, arms are down. My leg that's on the carriage is gonna stay straight. My platform knee is gonna bend and I'm gonna end up in a side lunge and come back up. Now it might feel good to kind of hook your big toe around the inner edge of the carriage. Yeah, with this heavier weight, just so that your foot doesn't slip around, okay? So I'm hinging my spine in relation to how much that supporting knee is bending. And when I stand up, you can squeeze the triceps and push your arms behind you. All right, now get down and stay. In that lunge, you're gonna bend and stretch your carriage leg and lower and lift your arms. Yes, my arms drop and then reach, swinging up and down. Last two. Last one, now push the leg all the way out and then stand up to long legs. Amazing. All right, let's do the opposite leg is going to be 
the pusher, okay? So now start with long legs. So now this one's slightly trickier, so make sure you're comfortable before you do this. Uh, so now the carriage leg is gonna be the one bending, platform leg is long. Now if your head goes first, that's a no-no. That's gonna end up in you losing your balance. So you wanna bend the carriage leg and think lead out with this knee and then come back in. So that knee and ankle are the furthest point out to the side. That's it. And again, you can kind of hook your feet around the edges of the carriage or the platform if that makes you feel more secure. All right. Now get out there and stay. You're going to pull yourself in and push yourself out with the platform leg. Good. Pressing the arms back and forth for two, for one. Pause with the long leg and stand all the way up to come in. <sighs> Amazing. All right, carefully step down, carriage leg first, then platform leg, walk around, and we'll do that on the other side. Okay, so step up with your new foot on your two sides. <sighs> Open your chest, kind of soften your knees. Now start with your squats. <sighs> Good. So obviously this movement is very similar. We just have a different leg on the moving surface. Good, chest up, hips get low. So good, all right, now come up tall and go into your straight leg, press it. Yes, have like a millimeter of a micro bend behind the backs of the knees. All right, when you're ready, once you press out, you're gonna come in with bent knees, reach out with straight legs, and your back is hinging. Again, in relation to how much your knees bend. If you're doing a small bend, you'll do a small lean. If you're doing a big bend, it's gonna be a bigger lean. Let's do three more. Get fully stacked each time. Last one, and then come all the way in and relax. Oh, amazing. Okay, so now one leg pressing at a time. So here we go. We're going to bend the platform leg, keep the carriage leg straight, and then restack. Yes, kind of hook the edge of your foot against the edge of those two surfaces to get that little bit of security. And then up, or if you're having trouble with your feet slipping, it might just be too heavy. Yeah, you can drop your springs down. Okay, on your next one, we're gonna scooter that carriage leg in and out as I lower and press with the arms. Ribs draw up and in for three, for two. Last one, squeezing those triceps. Now press to stand up with long legs. All right, switching which leg is doing the bending. So here we go. This is the one we wanna be a little more aware of. So lead with that outside ankle bone, my carriage knee bends, and then I straighten it on the return. So we're just ending up in this nice side lunge position. <sighs> Platform leg stays long the whole time. All right, two more. Feeling those abs draw up and in, away from the floor. Now hold and stay, bend the platform knee, push. And this carriage leg doesn't change, it stays solid. And you can lower and lift the arms if you'd like. Three, two, one, press out and stand all the way up tall. Huh. So good. All right, step down carefully, one foot at a time. All right, so let's go a little lighter. I'm gonna go back to my blue spring. Take your red spring off and then make sure your straps are accessible. I'm gonna put mine up on my shoulder rests. All right, so we are going to be sitting onto your machine. So I'm gonna face away from you actually so you have a better view of what's going on with my legs. So you're gonna sit on the edge of your carriage with your feet on the floor. Okay, and you wanna scoot pretty darn far forward. So your sitting bones are like right at that edge of the carriage. Now reach over, grab the strap off the shoulder rest that's furthest forward. And you're gonna slip this loop over your closest thigh, bring it all the way up till it's above your knee, okay? So now 
grab onto the edge of the carriage, hips are way forward, tuck your tail under, use your hands gripping to help you, and you're gonna roll down onto your back, okay? Now once you're there, if you're hanging off more than you're comfortable with, scoot your hips even further forward, okay? Now hold your head with one hand, hold a shoulder rest with another. I'm kind of holding this handlebar on the back of my shoulder rest. Now imprint your spine, lift that strap leg up, and then you're gonna also lift the other leg up to meet it. So we're both in tabletop, okay? So imprinted, slight flexion through the upper back. All right, now I'm gonna keep my legs knit together like they're one unit. I'm gonna tip my knees towards the pulleys, and then I'm gonna reverse and tip towards the foot bar. Okay, so we're getting a little rotation through the lower body. It's gonna be super helpful to keep your legs tight together like they're one instead of two, okay? Keep that tucking under feeling in your spine so that we don't get overly arched through the lumbar, okay? All right, now tip your legs towards your foot bar, hold there, straighten your legs on the diagonal, bend them and come back. Yeah, so with this pull from the side, even just keeping the knees together is work for those inner thighs. All right, now this time, once your legs get straight, let's try just keeping them straight, tipping them to the pulleys and then tipping them to the foot bar. Good, so those abdominals are supporting this twist through the lower body. Good, this is uncomfortable. Go back to bent knees. Last one. Woo. All right, now you can bend your knees for a second. You can hang your head back if that feels good. Oh. All right, so now both hands are gonna go behind your head. We're gonna flex up even higher and bring the legs back to tabletop. Now, if you ever feel off balance, grab one of those shoulder blocks again, okay? So now, all I'm gonna do is leave my big toes touching and wave my knees, kind of like butterfly wings, and then engage those inner thighs to come back. So I inhale, and then I exhale. So good. So you wanna move really slowly. This weight is light, so it's, it's kind of tempting to move quicker, but you wanna slow down so you don't get that reverberation through your torso. All right, now when the knees go side, we're gonna allow the head, neck, and shoulders to extend off the edge of the carriage. And then as they close, I flex back up. So the inner thighs and the abdominals are working together. Yes, inhale, enjoy that nice stretch through the upper back and then exhale, curl up. So you can have as much of your shoulder blades off the back edge of the carriage as you feel comfortable with. Okay, let's do that two more times. <sighs> Last one, drawing down a little bit with those ribs. Now curl up and stay, leave your strap leg and just straighten your free leg forward on a diagonal and back. <sighs> See if you cannot move this strap leg. Now you can reach your leg a lot lower than I'm reaching mine. Higher is a little bit easier. Lower is a lot more challenging. And you know, you can go lower if you don't have a window that your foot's gonna hit, okay? Two more. Now we're gonna switch legs. The free leg doesn't move and the strap leg is the one that straightens and bends. So good. Now the carriage may move slightly on this one. The goal is to keep the leg in line with your hip. Now let's alternate, switch, switch, switch as little movement on the carriage as you can. Inner thighs close. Now our grand finale is gonna be to rotate towards the bending knee. Now if you feel jerking on the rope, slow down. Three, two, one, come to the middle and then relax back and stretch. Whew. All right, you guys, come on up carefully. Put your feet down on the floor. Oh, hey, and then we're gonna do that all on the other side. Hooray, I'm gonna do the same side, but you are gonna switch. So come to your new side, get your feet on the floor, grab your strap and put it over the thigh of the foot closest to the shoulder rests, okay? All right, so now 
the further you scoot to the foot bar edge of your carriage, uh, the harder the tension is gonna be on the spring. So just know that if you're struggling, scoot closer to the shoulder blocks, okay? I'm gonna go right about in the middle, hold the front edge of your carriage, ease yourself down very slowly, march your legs up, and then here is where you can decide how much of your thoracic spine you want hanging off, okay? You'll get more stretch, but it'll be harder on the abs the further back you go. All right, so hold the head in one hand. I like to hold a shoulder rest for this first one, okay? Wherever is comfortable for you to hold. I've kind of got my hand between holding the further back one, okay? So now, like a mermaid tail, you got one leg, and then we're gonna start tipping from side to side, okay? I have a slight flexion in my upper back. One hip can roll slightly off, nothing too crazy, okay? So this is really to practice keeping those knees together, woo, and then allowing those obliques to help us move side to side. All right, now pause with the legs angled towards the foot bar, straighten, bend, and then switch back. So now we're staying at that far side a little longer. Okay, let's do that one more time. Weight goes more onto one hip than the other. All right, now pause with your legs straight, nice and slowly, like you're making a big rainbow with the feet. Up and over, and then come back. So go till you just hit your stopper this way, and then pull from those far side obliques to return. Now be imprinted, so you have a nice, smooth transition side to side. Ooh, so good. All right, last one. Now come back center, bend the knees, grab your head and hang back. Whew. Awesome. Okay, so now both hands behind the head, flex up even higher, find your tabletop, and now you're going to wave the knees, make a diamond shape, and then squeeze together. Yeah, and it's okay if this doesn't feel crazy light. If this was too heavy on the springs, we'd have a lot of trouble keeping our spine straight and in the line Ooh, with our feet. Okay, now adding the spine, we're gonna extend off the edge of the carriage as we inhale and then exhale, knees together, flex forward. Stretch and then exhale, feel that squeeze from the abs and the inner thighs. So good, two more times, nice and slow, no hurry. Now flex up and stay, free leg reaches out and in. As low as you can stabilize, squeezing that glute, don't move the strap leg. Whew. Now switch, free leg stays, strap leg reaches. There might be a tiny bit of movement on the carriage this time. Okay, so close, almost done. Now we alternate, keep the legs as close together as you can. And then to finish, we go rotating towards the bent leg. Move slowly enough that you don't jerk on the ropes. Three, two, one, and then relax all the way down. Whew. Okay, so good. All right, carefully help yourself up. That's not the comfiest spot to come out of. Whew. All right, so take your leg out of the strap and hang it up. All right, so now we're gonna do some seated arm work. Uh, go back to your heavier spring, so back to a red for me. All right, so we're gonna sit. If you have a platform extender or a cushion that you wanna be boosted up on, that's an option if that makes this more comfortable. So sit with your legs outstretched in front of you. That is not easy. So if it gets to be too hard, uh, bring your legs in and just cross them. Okay, so, but legs long if we can. Now grab your straps off of your shoulder rests, hold with your palms facing forward and sit up as vertically as possible, okay? Now having the legs straight is super challenging to the quads and to the hip flexors because the heels have to stay up away from the springs, all right? So sit this way for as long as you can. All right, take an inhale, elbows slightly soft. As you exhale, you're just gonna raise your arms to slightly above shoulder height and then lower them back down. That's all. Exhale to float. Inhale to lower. 
Yeah, that ab work gets even more challenging the higher the arms go. Yes, feel the inner thighs, feel those quads kicking the feet up away from the floor. You can flex or point your feet, whatever feels better. All right, now raise your arms up, flip your hands so the palms point down, bend your elbows wide to the side, and then press forward. Inhale as you bend. Now don't let your spine get pulled back with the elbows. Whew. Yes, this is deceiving. Yeah, we're doing arm work, but this is a ton of abs to stay in this sitting position. All right, now when your arms get to straight, you're gonna dive over your legs, flex your spine, round like you're <laughs> diving off a diving board. Now inhale, circle the arms straight out to the side, bend the elbows and lift your chest. Do that again. Exhale like we're diving underwater, circle and lift the chest, and then bend the elbows at the back end. Yeah, so it's literally like we're swimming through the water. We kick forward, we circle, and then we bend the elbows to go again. So we're extending the spine, looking up at the top, and then round. Two more times, long arms, bend the elbows, and then scoop through. One last time. All right, good. Okay, drop the arms and sit up. Take a rest for a second. All right, so next we're gonna take the palms, point them in to face one another, elbows bent, narrow arms. Okay, we're gonna get into more of that kind of diving over the legs position that we just practiced, but advancing it a little bit. So legs are super long, flip the palms to the floor and flex over the legs. Now leave your arms where they are and just sit your spine up like your head is coming out of the water. Now raise your arms to the ceiling without getting pulled off your sitting bones. Circle them to the side and down. And then when your elbows bend, we're gonna flex over the legs. Let's do that again. Flip your palms, sit up tall, arms stay. Arms lift to the ceiling, circle to the side, to the floor, and then bend the elbows and hollow over the legs. Good, let's do that a couple more times. We dive, arms and legs parallel, articulate the spine, fingertips to the ceiling, and then circle up, side, down, and then fold. All right, now this time, if you wanna add a little challenge, once we dive, instead of arms and spine going separate, they're gonna sit up together, which is much harder, and then circle and fold down. Do that again, dive, arms and spine, like they're one unit, sit up tall. Oh, you can feel that in your lower abdominals. And then bend two more times, dive, stack, circle around. Oh, one last time, dive stack, and then come all the way down with the arms. So good. All right, we're gonna do one last thing here. Again, this sitting position is half of the challenge, so sit crisscross if you need to. Bring the ropes over your shoulders. Make a diamond with your hands right in front of your forehead, and we're just gonna do some tricep presses. So not hands behind the head, just hands to the forehead. Yes, so we're working the triceps, but most likely you're gonna feel this more in the abs, trying not to tip over backwards. Yeah, we'll do five more. <sighs> Elbows out at 45 degrees, three, <sighs> two, try to sit tall, don't lean into the shoulder rest too much, I totally was, and then just come all the way down. Whew. Awesome, all right, so hang up your straps or put them down. Oh. Okay, hey, we are going to grab our box, like I talked about. So find yours, mine is over here at the end of my machine. Okay, so put your box on short, short ways. So we're gonna do a variation uh, on semicircle, if you're familiar with that in the repertoire. So lift your foot bars up one notch so you have a little extra boost up above the platform, okay? So typically this is done with your back on the carriage and extending the spine down through the springs. 
we're just going to change it up a little bit by being up on the box. Okay. So if the edge of the box is uncomfortable, you can lay a cushion or a towel or something up against it, but we're going to get down. So I like to either sit on top of the box to start with that works for you. You're going to wrap your toes around the foot bar, kind of drop your hips off the front of the box and then lay back over it. Okay. Now, once you're laying back over the box, kind of shimmy down until kind of like the bottom half, or at least the tips of your shoulder blades are off of the bottom of the box. Okay. Now this is a lot of spinal extension. So if that's not in your practice, feel free to skip this one. Okay. Now take your hands and you're going to hold on to the sides of the box with your fingers draping off. That gives you a little bit of control. Okay. So now we're going to move. Oh, and we're still on that one red spring, by the way, we didn't change uh, heels together, toes apart in that Pilates V with your heels connected and kind of lifted. Okay. Now all we're going to do here is just drop our tailbone towards the floor, extending the spine. Now scoop your tail, roll up and extend the hips. Okay. So we're just kind of finding where we can be, how far we can go in these two directions. And it's okay if your carriage isn't fully into the stopper, give yourself enough room to kind of clear your heels and find these two positions. Okay. Now you can scooch up or down to make this more comfortable on your back. Okay. Now lift your hips up and hold, draw the ribs and the hips together, heels high, use your hands on the box to help you push. You're going to straighten your legs and bend your legs. So leave the hips high the whole time. Now the springs aren't super heavy, so we have to really actively use the hamstrings to come back as close to the platform as we can. Okay. As you get more comfortable, you're welcome to try this with more springs, but at least to start, I like to do it a little bit lighter just so we can find the position. All right. Now come in and bend your knees, drop your tailbone towards the floor and do a couple leg presses here. So keeping that back extension, getting the inner thighs to fully touch and then return. Yes. And being on the edge of this box, it really kind of tells you that one spot that you're folding over. It's kind of great. All right. Now come in and bend your knees and we're going to put this all together. So tuck your tailbone, lift the hips high to push out. Now, once you're out there, melt your spine, tailbone drapes to the floor, and then you bend your knees. Do that again. Lead with your tail to roll up and push out and then soften your chest. Your tail gets to that articulated spot last and then you bend and your heels might even end up touching the platform at some point. That's totally fine. Yeah. So try to articulate your spine in order, which is not easy in this crazy position. All right. Now reverse, go out with the tail down, scoop and tuck. Once you get as high as you can, bend your knees and then drape down. I like this direction even better because once you lift up, it's like that pull in all connects together. So you roll down to push out and then scoop to lift and return. Do that two more times. Whew. Last one. All right. Now you can kind of get your whole foot on the bar, waddle your shoulder blades back on the box a little bit, get your elbows on the box and then just sit yourself down. Whew. Was that so much work for our spine or what? Oh, it feels amazing though after it's done. All right. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter to make this more about my abdominals. You're welcome to stay heavy if you want it to be more about your shoulders. So I'm going to go down to a blue and a white, a medium and a light spring. For some of you, your light spring might be a yellow instead of a white. Okay. So three quarters is where I'm at one notch down from the full red. Okay. All right. Now we've got our foot bar in this barely bumped up place above the platform. Keep that. Now come on up and get your hands on the box. You're going to put your heels against the foot bar with the balls of your feet on the wooden platform about hip width apart. And then you can come down to your knees and to your elbows. Okay. All right. So 
from here. If you're on the taller side, you might be more comfortable with your elbows further back. Okay, just find a good spot to be. Now think of widening your shoulder blades and drawing your ribs up, okay? So now all I want you to do is hover your knees off of the carriage and just kind of get comfortable here for a second. Feel your heels on the bar, breathe in and out, and then come back down. Okay, let's do that again. You wanna get your spine pretty well kind of level, parallel to the floor. Okay, if that went pretty well, let's move on to the next option, which is to, after you hover your knees, straighten your legs, bend your knees, make sure the carriage gets underneath your kneecaps, and come down. Do that again. We hover, we press, we return, and then we bend. Yeah, now again, on these lighter springs, it's more work for our abdominals on the return than it is for our arms and our legs. Okay, all right, now we're gonna start to pepper in some extras, take them or leave them. If you don't need to rest your knees down each time, feel free to just stay hovering. So now when you push out, we're gonna pike our hips up, drop the crown of your head to the box between your elbows, and then roll through your spine to get back to your plank and bend your knees. Do that again, push with your legs, drop your chin, pike your hips, and then roll through from tail to head to come in. Do that a few more times. You rest anytime you need to with your heels down. Now, if you're having trouble, it's not because you're not strong. This is all about timing and getting things coordinated at the right times, yes? So by getting that box underneath you so you can stack your weight on it, get the weight out of your legs, Last one, ears between your biceps, look at your feet, maybe you even touch the stopper, and then come all the way in. Whew. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're gonna try one more set of these. Either just do continuous pike to plank, no more bending in and out, that would be one choice. Uh, second choice would be to add a reach of one leg on the pike. Super fun, it almost kind of helps you get upside down a little easier, but only do it if this is comfortable and in your practice, okay? So we hover the knees to get to our plank. Now, pike the hips up. If you're lifting one leg, bend your knee a little bit, lift it towards the ceiling, and then bend it to come back to your plank. Other side, bend to reach up, and then bend to come down. It's just kind of to clear the foot bar and get you where we want to go. Okay, look at your hands and then look at your feet. Let's do two more. Now remember, the lift of the leg is totally optional. Bend your knees and come in. Oh, okay, so good. All right, we've got one last little thing. So you're welcome to stay lighter if you want it to be a little more stretchy. I'm gonna go back to a red. Give my legs a little last something to think about. Ah, okay, so we're gonna be in the same position, except leave one foot how we had it on the bar and the platform. Take your other foot to the middle of the box. So front foot is centered, back foot is off to the side slightly. So fan your toes a little bit up against the box so you have something to push with, okay? So now all I want you to do is straighten both legs if you can. Don't move the carriage, but just bend your knees and straighten your knees. So just kind of moving through this place. If you want even more stretch, you can drop your head when your legs get straight, as if you're trying to touch your forehead to the box, okay? You'll feel that majorly in that front hamstring. Now get down and stay. <sighs> Straighten just your back leg and then return. So I'm keeping my front shin totally vertical. So my knee is over my heel. I'm really actively kicking into the box with my front foot, okay? Now the closer your hands are to this edge of the box, the more they can help you. Now get out and stay, hold your back leg long, kick and push the box away from you with the front leg and hands, and then return. Exhale. Kick, let the weight of your head draw you down. 
Ah, <sighs> do that a couple more times. Now maybe your hips stay in the same spot. That's an option. If we're feeling bendy today, maybe our hips will drop a little bit. Or maybe for you to get your legs straight, your hips need to lift a little bit. So find where that is for you. Last one. Now hold that press out, get into even a little bit bigger of a stretch, and then come all the way in. <sighs> okay, let's do that on the other side. All right, so your new foot will be centered on the box. That'll just help the box not get scooted to the side, okay? And then your other foot off of center. Don't move the carriage yet. Just bend and stretch the legs. Now your back leg might not get all the way straight. That's totally fine. Okay, if you want more hamstring stretch, look upside down. <sighs> yeah, and maybe your back knee touches the carriage. How crazy would that be? Yeah, don't be afraid <laughs> if it can comfortably touch, do it. All right, now get down and pause, draw the ribs up and get to a flat back and start kicking with your back leg. <sighs> Very nice. So again, get the front shin as stacked as it can be. Use that back glute to push off the bar. Now get there and hold. <sighs> Press the box away from you. Get the front knee as straight as yours will be today. And then bend it. <sighs> Exhale, drop the head. Allow the weight to pull you forward. So good. Two more times. And then last one. <sighs> bend that front knee. Come all the way in. <sighs> All right, you guys, we're gonna take one last little breath to cool down together, and then we will be done, okay? So set your feet down, sit on your box, take an inhale, stay a stacking tall, and then as you exhale, just drape your hands off the front of the box, peel your abs back, let your head hang, take a big breath into the backs of the ribs here, and then as you exhale, Roll back up tall. Whew. All right, do that one more time. Just settling in, taking as big of breaths as you can in through your nose and then out through your mouth. All right, one last gentle stretch. Put one hand on the side of the box, other arm up, soften the bottom elbow to stretch. Now round over your legs, trace a circle over your feet, or I should say a half circle with both your hands. End up with your opposite hand on the box and then sit up tall. Now go the other way, leave these same arms where they are. Side bend to the opposite side first. Peel your abs back, round and sweep your hands over your feet. Find your opposite side bend and then all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you challenged yourself and tried something new uh, and just felt really good in your bodies. Uh, so if you did like that, please give it a thumbs up below. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any feedback or any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more like this and share this video with a friend. And thank you so much, I'll see you next time, bye.